Hello, this is Dr. Jack Jackson. Today we're going to look at um, some statistics that are built in, some statistical capabilities that are built in the TI-84 calculator. I have a calculator emulator here on the screen and I have some data over here to the side that we want to look at. So here's a, a list of a little bit of data, just, just something we can use as an example. So let's talk about how you can enter that data. In your calculator, start by hitting the STAT button right here and choose number 1, which is edit. I can, at this point I can just hit enter or 1. Now we're going to put this data into a list. If you have things in your list already, the first thing you want to do is put the arrow up so that they have the label of the column highlighted. At this point you want to hit clear and then enter to clear out that. So you want to be sure you always do that. Uh, when you're starting a new data set that you don't have any other data in there. Sometimes you can start typing in data, it'll type over what's there, but maybe only part of it and you'll get some extra data. So be sure you always clear it out. Please do not hit delete and enter because then, it's a, then the whole list will disappear from your table. It's possible to get it back, but it's a little bit of a hassle. So please don't do that. Just hit clear and enter. Now we can just enter the data perhaps in the order it came. 1, enter, 5, enter, 9, Enter, four, enter, five, five, seven, eight, six, five, six, five, five, one, eleven. As you're listening to this lecture, you should probably pause the lecture from time to time and make sure that you've actually done the same things in your calculator and you understand how it goes because there's something to be said for practicing this on your own calculator. So at this point, pause the lecture and enter this data and get caught up with me. Please pause now. Hit resume when you're finished. Okay, now we're back and we have our data in our list. Now there are a couple things that you can do with this. First thing is we might want to just put our data in order. Not absolutely necessary, but it might be helpful sometimes. So let me show you how to do that first. You can go to second stat, which is list, and you can go to right arrow to ops. You can either sort in ascending, number one, or descending order. Suppose we want to sort in ascending. We can say sort list one, and notice that second one. You can't do it with an L and a one. It's second L1, that's where our data. We'll say done. Okay, so this will put our data, so if we say, if we say sort in ascending order list 1, it will just say done, but now if we hit stat and go back to edit, we'll have the same data, but notice it is now in order, so we've got 1, 1, 4, 5, 5, 5, so this could be helpful if you were um, going to make um, some kind of further analysis of this. This might be useful just in and of itself. Now the calculator will also calculate several basic statistics. It's pretty easy to do. You just hit the stat button and go to calc, which is right arrow, and we'll do one variable statistics for list one. Remember that was second one to get list one. And hit enter. And notice what it returns. It returns X bar, which we know stands for the what does it stand for? It stands for the mean of the sample. So there's our mean. It also actually adds up all the x values, they're 83 when you add those up. It adds the x squares, which is maybe useful for something, but not for what we've been doing. It gives you two different measurements for the standard deviation. If this is a sample, you'll use the one that says s sub x. So that is 2.6149, etc. If you know for sure this is an entire population, then you'd use the sigma version. Remember the sigma has an n in the denominator of the formula, whereas the s has an n minus 1 in the formula. Now, for our purposes, unless you are very specifically told this is an entire population, you will always be using the s, because we will always be having samples unless it's very, very explicit that this is a population. If it does say it's a population, then of course use sigma. But well over 99% of the time in this course, we'll be using the S instead. Notice there are N equals 15 data points. Also notice this, this arrow that points down. That means if I scroll down, there's more information. 
and notice we will have our sometimes called our five point summary or our quartiles the minimum was one q1 was five median was five q3 was seven and the max maximum was eleven now uh, it doesn't figure out some things like the range but of course you can do figure that out once you've got this you can do eleven minus the one and figure out that that's ten for the range similarly you could do the inner quartile range so some of these things you can get back let's see what we can find here if you go to variables five then you can see some of the things here so you see the s of x is there the max and the min okay and you can have certain uh, things that that may show up including the quartiles are showing up here so if we want to do the inner, inner quartile range for example we could go here and say it's q3 Let's try that again. Let's see if that's giving me what I wanted. So five points. This number. Let's go down. Q3, which is nine, and Q1 is seven. So it's nine minus variables, statistics, and so you go to points. And 7 is Q1. Or you can just remember what they were if you'd written them down earlier. It might be easier. And we can subtract that to get the interquartile range. So the range is 10, the interquartile range is 2. So some basic things that we can do are, are set up there. Um, it will also do some, some plotting. So I'm going to go to Y equals. I'm going to make sure all of this is turned off. I'm going to go to stat plot. And I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use plot 2. So I'm going to go down to plot 2. And we can have a box plot. So right arrow here a few times till I get to the right one. That one, hit enter. And my data is in list 1. You can also have data in, well I'll show you this in a little bit, where you can have a data in list 1 and frequencies in list 2 for example, but all the frequencies are one here. And uh, I can quit now. And so that plot is turned on. Uh, whoops, I didn't turn it on. But if I go up here and hit enter, now that plot is turned on. If I'll do zoom statistics, let's see where that is. I believe it's nine. Let's go down here. Arrow down. Zoom 9 is Zoom Statistics, Zoom Stat. So I can just, since I know that's 9, from now on I can just type 9 once I do Zoom 9. Or I can arrow up or down until I find it. Hit Enter. And so there is my box plot. Now this one's a little strange because if you remember the median and the Q1 were both 5. But if I hit Trace now, it will tell me it's at the median is 5. If I go to the left, Q1 is also 5. goes to the left. Uh, the minimum is 1. The right, Q1 is 5. The median is 5. So a fourth of the data is 5. And then we have Q3 is 7. And then the maximum is 11. And you can see that. And you can plot multiple box plots. If you have, if you have here, if you go to stat and edit, if we had a second set of data in list 2, and then we went to stat plot, and turned on plot one, for example, and made another box plot there, you'd see two different box plots next to each other and you could compare them. It will also do a few other things. Um, let's see, it will, you can modify that plot to include outliers. And so we will do that. And let's see what it It'll mark the outliers with one of these marks, say with a plus, and we can graph that. And in this case, it's considering both this point here and this point here an outlier. And probably it's using our normal rule. Take this distance of this box, how long it is, do it one and a half, and if you're one and a half below this, it's, it's a, an outlier, or if you're one and a half times this distance, more above that, above the Q3, then it's also an outlier. So it, you can see the outliers there as well. So if you'd rather have a modified box plot, it will do that. Uh, again, go back here. We'll also do a few other things. Uh,
we can go and let's we can do a histogram. Okay. Let's do another zoom nine and see what happens. Okay, so there's a histogram. Now, it's probably grouped some way. So if we trace it. So the minimum is one, and this is a group that's less than three. This is from three to five. Five to seven. Seven to nine. Okay, actually, if you look at the inequalities there, this is from one to less than three. So if it's 2.99, it would be in here, but not three. Three is in this one here, so this is three to five, not including five, so three, four point five, anything like that would be in there. Five is actually included in this one, from five up to seven, including the five but not the seven. And there's seven to nine, not including nine. Nine to eleven, including nine but not eleven. And then eleven to anything up, up uh, well, this is less than thirteen, so. So it gives us that kind of a graph too. So it will do several basic graphs, and it's a really nice way to uh, remember to get those basic statistics. Let's go over that again. Calculate one variable statistics for our list. By the way, you do not have to have it in order first. That was just an optional thing. But you can read off the basic statistics there. Um, and so we have a nice, easy way to get some nice basic statistics for uh, a data set. So there's a quick introduction to the TI-84 calculator and some statistics.